one. Hello. Hope all is well. A little bit of a different environment again today, purely and simply because I want to show you all this collection of different plants which are so important to us. Um, at the start of the term, in September, we looked at plants, we looked at our cells, different, um, our different systems that make us function as we are and the way we go about our everyday lives. Plants have to do exactly the same. Now, I've got a collection here of different ones and they're all completely different because they live in different environments. Now, I've just picked this one from the garden. This is a common weed. So you've got your leaves here and you've got your flower at the top and here you have your roots. Now, we did a drawing and it's in your books where you identified the parts of a plant. You also identified parts of the human and like the brain and the heart and things like that. Plants are very similar to us. They have circulation just like us. If you look at my veins there, what goes around those veins, or what travels in those veins is blood. They travel all around my body and all around our bodies. Plants have got very similar things. They've got very similar things called vessels and they carry water around the plant, which is why I have a bit of a problem. I've been desperately trying to keep these tomato plants going. This one is doing okay, as you can see. It's quite happy, that one. This one, I'm struggling with. Now I'm pretty good at um, bringing plants on, as you've, you've done yourselves in the lab. Does this one look familiar to you? I mean, I grew that one from a leaf. They're called money plants. Now, you all, well, not all of you, but a lot of you took these home. You, then you've still got some in the lab with your names on, which you can take whenever you want. Now, when it comes to plants surviving in different environments, if you think of the rainforest, so it rains all of the time. You have plants with very large leaves like this. And if you've got plants where there's hardly any water, or that are trying to grow and survive, there aren't any leaves like these. These are called cacti, cactus plants. Now, there's a reason for this which I'm going to explain. Let's just take the leaf for example. At the top of the leaf, this is a special area which the sun shines on and when the sun shines light onto it it starts to make its own food called glucose you've probably heard of glucose that is takes place here in the leaf and there's ways that I can demonstrate where the, the glucose is later on when we're a little bit older if we turn the leaf over you can't see these but there's hundreds of little tiny holes in the bottom of the leaf these little holes take in gases, give out gases, but they also release water, like steam, into the atmosphere. So if you've got lots and lots of water coming down, in the case of this one, it needs, well, it needs water for it to grow, but also if it's had too much water, just like we do, it needs to get rid of it. So therefore what it will do, it's got if that's underneath that one, it's got lots and lots of these little holes where it can release water into the atmosphere, almost like a gas, or with other gases as well, like steam. Now, it takes it in through the soil, as we know, because we've labeled the parts of the plant. I'm gonna draw it again for you today because we need to learn the parts. So let's just recap on that. Leaves are important to the plant. Now, these, they don't need them because they need to look after their water, otherwise they won't be able to survive. They'll end up like this otherwise. Now, if you've got lots of water in the rainforest, it will release through the little holes, the water into the atmosphere, and the plant will be absolutely fine. Now, in a desert situation, there are no leaves. And you think to yourself, well, the plant needs that top bit for it to make its own food because it doesn't go to the supermarket to buy food it makes it itself in the form of glucose so let's call it sugar well how does this do it then well this doesn't use leaves to do it this uses it in its stem now that's a stem there so these actually make their own food 
in the stem. And you might think to yourself, well, what are these spikes for? I'm not going to touch that one because that's really sharp. And that one, what do you think that's for? Have a think about it. If something's spiky, why do you think that is? There's two reasons for these cacti. One, it's to stop animals from eating it because it's spiky. Insects, birds, stop them from eating the plant. Because remember I said, the plant makes sugar in its leaf. And animals eat leaves, they eat plants, we eat plants to get the sugar from it. Something you might not have thought about, but we do. Think of vegetables, think of fruits. They're all plants, tomatoes, fruits. All these different things that we eat, they all come from plants. Now, these spikes not only protect the plant from animals eating it, stops animals from eating it because they don't like the spikes so they don't go near it. They're silver, these spikes are silver. Now in the desert it can be over 50 degrees, which is nothing. I mean it's about 26 today, it's twice as hot as today. Now, not many things can live in the desert, but you do get plants. So what they do, they do not want to lose water from the bottom of their leaves, do they? Because they'd end up like this. But what they do, they make their own food in the stem. Also, like I said earlier, these spikes, they reflect the sunlight. Now, if you've got something that reflects the sunlight, what does it do? It keeps it cool. So therefore, these silver spikes that you see not only protect the cactus they also reflect the sun so the plant keeps cool inside because a plant is like a human being it needs to be a certain temperature otherwise it won't work properly or grow or survive and that's what it does it also holds its water it doesn't lose a lot of water which is why if you're in the desert and you open up a cactus inside its vessels like I said veins there's lots of water now let's just follow the route of what happens now I drew for you at school now if we say this is our leaves and there's your veins like that now these leaves veins have a special name and this special name is called xylem xylem that's the plant's veins now all the way down the stem that's our stem here, like that. This is our stem. This is our leaf. What do you think these are that are in the ground? Let's say that's soil there. Now let's have a look at this. You can't really see it very well. But these are in the ground. Now, what do you think they're called? Any idea? They're called roots. They're called roots. So, here we have the key words that I want you stem, root, leaf. Now, I'm going to call these goes up here like that into the leaf I'm going to call this veins for now where we are in our learning but the actual correct name is a xylem so if I put xylem there like that if you can remember that that's amazing I, I know year nines who've struggled to remember that and it's called a xylem now if we follow the water which is why this is all dried up it's not had a lot of water whereas this one has this one was left in the sun too much and it dried out so you can see I don't think I can rescue that let's just pull it out and have a look and you'll be able to see the roots now can you see how long the roots are they're actually longer than the actual tomato plant that's how long they are and they spread out in all different directions because what they want to do They want to pick up the water from the ground. Now, if we follow what happens, then you'll have a better understanding. So I'm going to use this blue pen. And although I call this veins, it's actually called a xylem. 
and I want you to try and remember that now. And later on, I want you to draw the plant and label it. I'll put the picture on, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the water, that's why we need soil, because soil is like a sponge. It holds water. If you get a sponge and you put it on some water, it absorbs it. Soil does the same. And that's why plants need soil, because it absorbs the water, amongst other things that we don't need to talk about now, but we will later. So let's say that there's nice and lots of water in the soil, and up goes the water, and these are called roots. Like I said earlier, roots. The water goes into the roots, and they've got lots of roots like this, look, everywhere, all over the place. And the water goes up, and it goes into the veins. And it travels up the stem, 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 like that. Like that. And then what it does, because the plants need water like we do to be able to survive, it then goes into the leaves, like that. So there's the water in the leaves. The plant's happy, it's had a nice drink of water. And then when it's had enough, and it's had enough water, where does it go? The little holes from underneath the leaf, the water evaporates. I don't know if you remember that word evaporate. If you heat water, it evaporates into the atmosphere. This is what happens through these little tiny holes. Now these little tiny holes, I'm going to push it a bit further because I know that you, you, so you can take on words like this. You've proved it to me many times. These little holes underneath are called stomata. And they open and close, blowing water out. But they not only do that, which is why they're so important, they also let out something called O2, which is, what is it? Oxygen. What do we breathe in? This stuff. We breathe in oxygen, which is why a leaf is so important. So on the top, the sunlight goes onto the leaf. The leaf absorbs the sunlight and makes glucose. Underneath the leaf, hundreds of little tiny, tiny little holes called stomata that release water out into the atmosphere and also give us our necessary oxygen. Which, why trees, plants are so important. Think of the rainforests. They call it the lungs of the earth because they give us so much oxygen. And that's why plants are so important. Now, I'm going to try and get that one going again later. But this one's doing well. But let me give you some evidence here. Let me give you some evidence of how important the veins are. Now, if I was to get some food colouring, this is simple celery, right? So I've just done that with to remove its outer jacket because the xylem is the vein here the xylem is inside this jacket so let's get this waxy coat off right like that and if I was to get some food colouring pop it in there like that a bit more Ooh, there we go nice colour that is and I was to put that in there and leave it overnight, you could see, or you will see, the blue going up the xylem, because this is the stem, this is celery. We eat the stem, okay? Lots of plants, we eat the stem. Celery's one, rhubarb, the flowers on the top, and the leaf. Now, flowers we'll talk about next lesson, but we need to be concentrating on the leaf. Now, this is one I did earlier, right, only an hour ago, can you see the blue dye going up the xylem, up the veins? We call it veins because you'll understand it better because we've got veins, but they're actually called xylem. And they, Can you see that going up there? It's even got to there, look. Okay, so obviously the xylem in there is under there and it's come back out again there and it's gone up there like that and it's got to there. So it's already halfway up the stem of the plant, which is why when you see some of these flowers in the florists, they've got little colours around the top, blue, reds, yellows. The flowers itself will be white, like you've got these roses here. And around the edge will be different colours. That's because they've put food colouring 
in the plant. This is something you could do at home. Just get some celery, some food colouring, and you can see what happens. Look at that. That's only from an hour ago. And that demonstrates the importance of the veins in the stem of the plant. That is why the leaf is important, the roots are important. They all work together to be able to grow and survive. Plants grow just like us. They undergo the same kind of processes as what we do. Even the cells that make up the leaves and the cells that make up the stem are similar to our cells that make up our skin. And I can show you that in the lab. So let's recap then. I've just thrown my tomato on the floor. Never mind, I'll pick it up later. We discussed that different plants live in different environments and they are adapted to where they live. Just like animals are adapted to where they live. Plants are adapted too. Adaptation it's called. You'll do it later on throughout your school years. But when we looked at plants last year, we drew and you labelled a plant. That's been September. I think because of the situation as it is, we need to start putting our learning together. We've done a wonderful job with, with um, forces, with gravity and friction and things like that. Now, I'm losing, it's windy now, I'm losing all my plants. <laughs> so, let's just have a quick recap. Different environments need different types of adaptations for them to live. Bigger leaves so they can lose more water. If it's constantly raining, it wants to get rid of the water. Otherwise it will shrivel up, it'll have too much water. Right? This one needs to conserve its water. What I mean by conserve is hold it in. It doesn't, need, it doesn't want to lose water, it can't. Hence why it hasn't got big leaves. So therefore, that is how plants are adapted to where they live. So, I've set you a task. What I want you to do, I want you to draw and label a plant, leaf, stem, roots, veins, otherwise known as xylem. I want you to try and remember this word xylem because this will come up again and again and again. And as far as leaves are concerned, they come in. If you, you choose to do science and carry on with it, it comes up every year. They're very important. So that's what I want you to do. And then I want you to do another thing for me. I want you to have a look at a plant that you find interesting. Find a plant in your garden or around where you live that you find interesting. Draw it, photograph it, maybe you can find out what it is. And then what we're going to do, when we all meet up again, we'll have a collection of all these different plants. So, first things first, I've put the flower, sorry, the plant, on to Google um, Classroom. I want you to draw it and label it, just like it is on there, and then find one for yourself. And then I'm leaving Zoom on for you to come back and speak to me if you need to. But that's the task. We're going to be looking at plants and then we'll look at ourselves later. But in the meantime, this week it's the leaf, next week I'll discuss a bit further with you and I'll show you how we can test the leaf to make sure where the starch is in the leaf, the glucose level. I talked about starch then. But I hope you've uh, liked looking at the different plants and I'll see you soon.